New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas is one of the most revolutionary roller coasters ever built. This hybrid coaster was a conversion of the original Texas Giant wooden roller coaster. And this ride was a game changer for the amusement industry in many ways. I'd argue it may be the most ambitious prototype coaster ever created by a manufacturer on their first try. Not only did New Texas Giant introduce the amusement industry to Rocky Mountain construction, but it showed parks they could transform aging wooden roller coasters into top-notch attractions. So in this video, I will review New Texas Giant and detail its impact on the entire amusement industry. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, the coaster wars were taking place. Every park wanted to have the tallest and fastest coaster. Some parks went for the steel record. Other parks went for the wood record. One of these coasters was the Texas Giant. This hulking wood coaster was built in 1990 and it would stand 143 feet or 44 meters tall, making it the world's tallest wooden roller coaster. Designed by Curtis D. Summers and built by the Din Corporation, Texas Giant had 4,920 feet or 1,500 meters of twisted track. In its early years, the ride was very well received. And as late as 1999, the coast was still claiming the top spot on Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards for the world's best wooden roller coaster. The success of Texas Giant caused Summers and Din to make an even larger coaster in 1991. They created Mean Streak for Cedar Point, a wood coaster that would become the new tallest wood coaster, standing 161 feet or 49 meters tall. The following year, John Pierce and the Roller Coaster Corporation of America, or RCCA for short, opened the Rattler at Fiesta, Texas. While this coaster wouldn't be taller than Mean Streak, it would have a larger drop of 166 feet or 51 meters. Flash forward to the 2000s. Six Flags Over Texas was trying their best to preserve Texas Giant. They shortened the trains from seven cars to six, they had trim brakes, and they replaced large sections of the ride. But they needed a more permanent solution, or else the coaster would need to be removed. It was getting that rough. Cedar Point with Mean Streak and Six Flags Fiesta Texas with Rattler were having similar issues. All three of these coasters went from being some of the signature attractions at their respective parks to being shelves of their former selves. In 2009, Alan Schilke and Fred Grubb of Rocky Mountain Construction developed the Steel Eye Box track. This steel track sat on all steel ledgers, so the eye box track was extremely versatile. It could offer steep drops, highly banked turns, and even inversions. It could be used on a ground up coaster, or it could be used to retrofit an existing structure. The last part caught the eye of Six Flags. Texas Giant was an icon for Six Flags Over Texas, and the park saw RMC's eye box track as a solution. So in March of 2009, Six Flags Over Texas announced that Texas Giant would be closed for the entire 2010 season for $10 million in renovations. At the time, everyone assumed Texas Giant was just going to receive a full retracking, similar to what happened with Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm in 2016. But early in 2010, it was discovered Texas Giant would be the guinea pig for RMC's new iBox track. And was there a more ambitious and prestigious coaster ever created for a company's first coaster? Just look at the prototype coasters from today's most popular steel coaster manufacturers and compare. Bolger and Mabillard opened Iron Wolf in 1990 at Six Flags Great America. This stand-up coaster has since been relocated to Six Flags America, where it was converted into a floorless coaster named Firebird. The coaster is more tolerable to sit down trains, but it still has a reputation for being rough. Intamin opened Wilderness Run at Cedar Point, a small kiddie coaster. This is not going to win any awards. Mach opened Meteor on the German Fair Circuit in 1957, a family single rail coaster that was relocated a few times and is now defunct. Vacoma opened three MK1200 corkscrew coasters in 1979, all in Europe, and all of them have since been removed from their original parks due to complaints with roughness. SNS opened Hypersonic XLC at Kings Dominion in 2001. While the coaster was praised for its launch, the coaster was a reliability nightmare and removed after the 2007 season. Premier Rides opened three coasters in 1996. 
They opened the Runaway Mountain Indoor Coaster at Six Flags Over Texas, and they opened two Flight of Fear clones at Kings Island and Kings Dominion. The latter was ambitious for being the first coaster to feature a linear induction motor launch, and these coasters are still popular today, but at no point was Flight of Fear in contention for the world's best coaster. Meanwhile, New Texas Giant was pushing the envelope with steep drops, daring overbanks, and off-axis hills. The coaster opened in 2011, and many enthusiasts placed it atop their coaster rankings. The ride placed in the top 10 of the Golden Ticket Awards in each of its first five years, and it started a revolution in the coaster industry. Parks were looking to breathe life into their aging wood coasters by having RMC come in and give them the Iron Horse treatment. Without the New Texas Giant, who knows if another park would have given RMC their opportunity to test out their iBox track. So who knows if we would have gotten the amazing rides that followed like Iron Rattler or Steel Vengeance. New Texas Giant has lost some luster in recent years as RMC keeps outdoing themselves on their new projects, but the fact RMC used a prototype technology, adapted a pre-existing structure, and delivered a coaster that contended for the world's best when it opened is remarkable. But New Texas Giant is still the most popular attraction at Six Flags Over Texas a decade later. This coaster often has the longest line in the park, outside of three far lower capacity rides in La Vibora, Riddler Revenge, and Justice League Battle for Metropolis. The ride has had a 30 to 60 minute wait in most of my visits to Six Flags Over Texas. That is with two train operations and barely any stacking. The staff working New Texas Giant usually does a great job pumping these trains out, but when you're stuck in the ride's queue line, it does give some amazing views of the coaster's first half and finale, and the ride is a beauty to watch. The ride has a dominating presence with its massive wooden structure. You can also really see the structure sway and hear it creak after a train passes by. It just goes to show how much RMC pushed the limits of the old Texas Giants ride structure. And a note if you're using the skip the line pass for this ride, the flash pass line is nowhere near the main entrance. You actually want to follow the signage for the picnic groves. You take this narrow path between a food stand and the log flume. The merge point is on your right before you reach Titan. New Texas Giant doesn't really have any theming, but the station is 100% Texas. You hear the stereotypical Texan music, and you see Texas flags, longhorns, and Cadillac cars. The latter are used for the trains. Each train is themed to a 1961 Cadillac, and the bodies of these trains are gorgeous. But I'm not a fan of the plexiglass panels on the side. I understand why they're there because the ride has some ridiculously tight clearances, but they do stick out like sore thumbs from the otherwise beautiful vehicles. Thankfully, they don't really hurt the ride experience, for me at least. These trains are notable for being from Gerstlauer, New Texas Giant and Iron Rattler are the only two RMC coasters with Gerstlauer rolling stock. Those were the company's two earliest Iron Horse conversions, and they hadn't yet developed their own train. I personally prefer the Gerstlauer trains. The lap bars are extremely comfortable, I hardly notice the shin guards, and they're more open than the RMC trains. However, these trains are the reason Six Flags will no longer work with Gerstlauer. In July of 2013, a woman was tragically ejected from New Texas Giant mid-ride. The incident caused Six Flags to retrofit New Texas Giant and Iron Rattler with seatbelts, and Six Flags took Gerstlauer to court, which soured a previously fruitful relationship. In terms of seat selection, I far prefer the back. The front does have good airtime, but I can't think of a single element the front does better than the back. New Texas Giant follows the old Texas Giant's layout almost perfectly. The only part that was eliminated was the helix wrapping around the lift hill. This caused the ride's track length to decrease from 4,920 feet or 1,500 meters to 4,200 feet or 1,300 meters during the conversion. But the elements got way more exciting. And the ride became very smooth as well. RMC improved the transitions from piece to piece in their later coasters but outside of an occasional bump you only feel in a wheel seat, this coaster is glass smooth. It is extremely re-rideable, and the occasional bump does not detract from the ride in any way or cause any discomfort. Once dispatched, you round a 180 degree turn 
and ascend the 153 foot or 47 meter tall lift hill. New Texas Giants height was increased from the original coaster by 10 feet during the conversion. And the first drop on New Texas Giant is exceptional. It delivers some powerful and sustained ejector airtime. The airtime is more sustained than usual on the other RMC first drops because of the sheer size of the coaster. It's one of my favorite drops on any ride. That is followed by a step up into the first overbank. And this step up delivers very strong ejector airtime throughout the whole train. You then traverse three consecutive overbanks. This is one of the things people often criticize New Texas Giant for, but I personally don't mind the overbanks. Each one rides a bit differently, so it's not repetitive. The first one delivers weak floater airtime throughout the train. The second one is extremely whippy. Everyone gets laterals, but they're a bit stronger up front. But the back compensates by getting a pop of ejector airtime in the descent to complement those laterals. The third one has a crazy head chopper with a support structure. Up front, you get good positive G's entering the element. In the back, you get some weak laterals traversing the element. The series of overbanks is followed by an incredible speed hill. Everyone gets launched out of their seat. After the first drop, this is the ride's next best airtime moment. This one gives every seat powerful ejector airtime. You then bank upwards into the mid-course brake run. This offers no airtime, but the climb does offer some positive G's that feel stronger towards the back of the train. The first half feels wild and reminiscent of an RMC. The second half is where it's clear that New Texas Giant is a prototype, as the coaster lets its foot off the accelerator at a few points. The train coasts through the brake run without slowing down and then sharply dives down to the left. This drop is very snappy and offers some great laterals towards the back. That is followed by a sizable hill that delivers weak floater airtime throughout the train. This type of airtime is extremely uncharacteristic for RMC. I'm struggling to think of another RMC that offers this type of airtime on any hill. You don't drop all the way down to the ground after this hill. Instead, you slightly dip down and then crest a really sharp drop that brings you back down to the ground. This hill pierces through the structure and delivers a pop of ejector airtime up front. In the back, you get some strong and sustained ejector airtime on the drop. That is followed by a banked bunny hill. The off-axis banking isn't as extreme as RMC's later coasters, but the hill still delivers great ejector airtime throughout the train. You then twist to the back side of the coaster for the final lap. At this point, you really feel the coaster starting to slow down. You then traverse three consecutive bunny hills. The third one ends in a tunnel. All three give weak flejector airtime up front. In the back, the first two deliver slightly stronger flejector airtime, and the third delivers a good pop of ejector airtime as you plunge into the darkness. You then coast through three straight tunnels that loop around the far end of the ride. When the ride originally opened, these tunnels had rainbow lights, and they looked really cool, but they've since been disabled. Unfortunately, these tunnels are rather boring. All three are rather slow, and the first two offer no airtime moments. The unbanked turns in between the tunnels do at least give some faint laterals. The final tunnel does have a solid bunny hill. This hill and the outdoor bunny hill that follows give airtime pops teetering between flejector and ejector pops, depending if the ride is running fast or slow. You then hop into the brake run, getting one last tiny pop of airtime, ending the ride. New Texas Giant is missing a few things the later RMCs featured. This ride doesn't have any inversions, which were sorely missed. The ride's airtime isn't as extreme as the other RMCs, particularly in the second half. I'm used to RMC bunny hills trying to launch me to the moon. And the pacing suffers in the second half, particularly in that tunnel sequence. But we have to remember something. New Texas Giant is only weak when compared to the other RMCs, and almost all of their coasters are considered elite rides. Where New Texas Giant excels is in the length department and quantity of airtime department, and it showcased what RMC could do on future projects. So what would I rate New Texas Giant? I would give this coaster an 8.5 out of 10. I still really like this coaster. It's long and loaded with airtime. It's smooth and extremely rewritable. It is my favorite ride Six Flags over Texas, and it earns a top spot in my top 50 steel rankings. While it may be towards the bottom of my RMC rankings, 
That doesn't make New Texas Giant a bad ride. It just goes to show how incredible RMC's later coasters became, and New Texas Giant laid the foundation. So those are my thoughts on New Texas Giant, the prototype RMC hybrid coaster. Have you ridden this ride? How do you think it compares to the other RMCs? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, since there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.